Good morning and welcome to the walk off, everybody. I'm Scott Belford, joined as always by the best co host in the biz, Adam Mack. And buddy, I don't know uh, if you noticed, but I'm wearing my vacation Blue Jays shirt ah, in hope nice. of bringing some, some good juju into it. the uh, baseball atmosphere. And then hopefully uh, it rains down news on us, right? I, I just want to know what that next shoe to drop is going to be after yesterday. <laughs> Could be anything. Could be anything. And who knows when it comes. Is the thing who right? knows when it comes? It could be oh, by the time we get this video done, it could be a week away still. It could be, oh my I god, hope, I hope imagine, it's not longer. Than can that. you imagine if it's a month? Blue Jays fans are gonna be like, This is the worst offseason ever. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, huge news yesterday in Blue Jays land, but uh, more news came out yesterday afternoon, and we didn't really get to it. The Cy Young winners were announced. So we figured we'd do a video here on that. We really appreciate all of you who are watching. Obviously, uh, I just wanted to touch on really quickly. We have a clips channel now, which is about a month old. This is just something we decided to do because we were such a long form podcast. And we know that, uh, you know, some people don't have 55 minutes every single day to consume Blue Jays content. So we did clip things up. So if you are on this channel and you have yet to subscribe, we would truly appreciate you subscribing to the clip channel. Numbers Let's continue to it. grow. It's uh, it's been pretty yes, impressive. So uh, very cool. And that's all because of the walk off community. So we thank you very much. OK, let's start with the American League, buddy, because the yeah, the three finalists were Justin Verlander, Dylan Cease with the White Sox, and of course, our boy Alec Manoa. And. It was a unanimous landslide win for Justin Verlander. I think we all saw this coming. A de mm -hmm. deserving win, too, by the way. A 1.75 ERA, 175 innings. He's coming off of a Tommy John surgery. This is his third Cy Young win. He just won the World Series. I mean, kind of a romantic, magical season for 40-year-old Justin Verlander. Yeah. No, very cool. I mean... Got his World Series win, finally. Uh, I mean, he's got a World Series win. I mean, like a, a game yeah. win in a World Series. A game series win. That had eluded him for his entire career, which is kind of crazy he's to pretty think much, about. He's pretty much checked all his boxes, right? Yeah, he's probably going to the Hall of Fame, I would say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, an obvious first ballot Hall of Famer there. It is going to be interesting to see what his deal is is going to be this off season. He's one of the premier starting pitchers on the free agent market. And the rumors are he's after a contract somewhere in the realm of what Max Scherzer got last year. So two years, $80 million. Be interesting to see who bites because Jay's, he still obviously has value. Jay's just missed out on him last year. Do you think... They make another push for Verlander? Or is that ship sailed? We got Gossman instead. See, isn't that the question? And that's a really good, um, a really good caveat to kind of toss around here as to are the Blue Jays going to dip into free agency for their outfield position need? Are they going to dip into free agency for their starting pitching need? Is this all going to be addressed by trade or some sort of mix of the two? I don't know how heavily the Blue Jays are going to be in on top end starting pitching. But I mean, all the rumors are guys like Brandon Nemo, who are obvious candidates to fit into this team mm -hmm. as a center fielder, lefty bat, an outfield need. I mean, the rumors are five years, 100 mil plus, right? Even Michael Conforto, even if he takes a one year deal, probably $25 million. So where are they going to spend the money? I don't know. They obviously freed a bunch up, though, with that Teoscar move. DFAing Tapia, DFAing Bradley Zimmer. They've got 20 plus million on the books now that they didn't before. The Ryu, 20 million. The That's Ryu insured. Insurance, so yeah. They, yeah. So there's definitely money there. They're planning something. Okay, so a anything else uh, stand out to you here on this Cy Young Award? I got the tweet pulled up here from Fox Sports MLB uh, on this list. Dylan Cease, second place. You know what? Dylan Cease, I probably did not give him enough credit because of his walk rate. 
but he had such a dang good season. And even if your walk rate's high, if none of those guys ever come in to score, you know, how do you fault him? He had a mm-hmm. 2.2 ERA, 184 innings pitched. He had a 6.4 wins above replacement, you know, 14 second place votes, 10 third place votes. He was unanimously the second place dude, mm-hmm. right? What about Shohei Otani? Because this one stands out to me. Nine second place votes. He got more than mm-hmm. Alec Manoa. Yes, he did. Yes, that he did. doesn't quite seem right to me. I feel like he's getting... Look, he's a, a very good pitcher. He's a, a great pitcher, okay? I don't want to take anything away from him. I feel like nine votes more, like more votes than Alec Manoa feels like he's getting votes on behalf of his bat. And I don't think that's appropriate. Am I out to lunch here? I don't know if it is so much that as it is the time zones. And I think that a lot of those, and I don't, I didn't, it's not like I saw a map of which baseball writers voted from where, but my guess is West Coast voters who had a chance to see Shohei the most and maybe like all of these East coast games were over by the time they were done work, right? It is a four hour difference in some of these cases. I just think the West coast voters leaned Shohei heavy because they saw him so much more, a little bit of recency bias. I'm not buying that Scott, no? because nobody watched the white Sox at all. And Dylan C still got a <laughs> bunch of votes. So I'm not buying it. <laughs> I don't know. Our boy White Sox Rick is not liking that, but no. no. Uh... <laughs> All right. Well, we don't have to agree. Uh, let us know in the comments, though, what you think of, uh, obviously, Verlander had the big year, but uh, did Shohei Otani really deserve nine second place votes? I don't think so. He did finish fourth. Now, finishing third and probably deservedly so, despite the fact that I'm biased and I would have given him the Cy Young, but Alec Manoa coming in third with um, what were his votes at there? I know you've got uh, there's seven second place votes and seven 13 third place. third place votes, whereas Otani had nine and seven. So right. two more second place votes for Otani, six more third place votes for Alec Manoa. So the total points was uh, more I mean, for Manoa. One thing stood out to me about Alec Manoa's season workhorse. 196.2 innings pitched. Let's face it. If he was on a non-playoff team, he would have pitched over 200 innings. They just had to massage his, his start so that he was game one of the wild card, right? Second lowest single season ERA in Blue Jays team history. Okay. Like look back on who has pitched in a Blue Jays uniform. Like we've got hall of famers like Roger Clemens, Roy Holiday. Yeah. There's been studs like Dave Steeb. Pat you know, Hedkin. Jack Morse pitched in a Blue Jays uniform. David Cohn mm-hmm. pitched in a Blue Jays uniform. Like, man, this is really impressive. A 2.24 ERA, 196 innings pitched, a 5.9 wins above replacement, all-star season, youngest Cy Young Award finalist in Blue Jays history, 24 years old free agent in 2028 no moment has been too big for this kid and i truly believe from the bottom of my heart that this is just the start this is the start of a long run of cy young finalists oh you know nominations i i would tend to say the start with lat was last year when he started but that's just me from a technicality standpoint um, look for me, uh, workhorse absolutely, and I'm not gonna argue anything you just said. I just want to highlight the fact of the massive innings increase he had this year over last year, pitching way more than what you know the the typical safe workload increase you know conventionally is what conventional baseball wisdom mm-hmm. would have you believe with. Honestly, almost no dip in his productivity on the back half of the season. He did have a few rough starts in August. Yeah. But it's not As like everyone does. You know, it's, Verlander had some rough starts. <laughs> yeah. So he like he bounced back and September was awesome. Uh, 
like he was great. He was great. He pitched so much more than his workload has ever been before. And the fact that he didn't uh, tail off at the end, he wasn't a, you know, midway through the fifth kind of a pitcher. Like he was still pitching six, seven, eight innings on occasions at right, right till the end of the year. Like, man, that's. And Adam, another thing that, another thing that stands out to me about this kid is his mental toughness and his focus, his yeah. ability to show up big in big games. And I mean, even if you think about his MLB debut, right, he was kind of thrust into an almost do or die situation. And Blue Jays fans may remember looking back when he got the call up in June of 2021, right? Mm -hmm. Injuries were plaguing this starting rotation and not just plaguing it. There weren't a lot of other options outside of Manoa to be called up. And the amount of pressure to put on a 23-year-old kid, forget how good he looked in the minors. The bigs is different. Totally. And he did not skip a beat. He came in and even when he did struggle, it was never a pouty flip out type of reaction. It was always a very focused, Kate, I'm getting pulled. Let me go grab the first catcher I can find and first coach. Let's get a, let's get on the iPad and let's see what I was doing wrong. Just a sponge. Man, it's funny how uh, any discussion we have that involves Alec Manoa quickly becomes a Alec Manoa episode. So yes, yes, we'll move on. I know, I know I can't right. help it. And no, if you're not a blue Jays fan watching this, we're sorry. We're sorry. Yeah. I'll just have to title this video. Alec Manoa was hosed inside. Or something like that. All right. Let's pivot to the NL. Shall we? Because this one uh, unanimous as well. Sandy and Alcantara. Sandy Alcantara. Uh, may very well be just the best starting pitcher in all of baseball right now. The kid is a stud. He's unbelievable. What Kim Ang managed to do with that contract too, five years, $56 million, basically buying out all his arb years, has just saved the Marlins literally $50 million, mm-hmm. $70 million, somewhere in that range. Like it it blows me away the foresight to be able to lock this kid up. And it's funny, even when they did it, everyone knew that it was a great contract, but also when you're buying our beers, you know, and we've watched this blue Jays front office, go the other direction with it, where they're like, you know what, let's ride it out. We can deal with this come free agency, which is kind of what it looks like they're doing with this core. But as for the Marlins Ang got in there, took a chance on Alcantara and now it is paying off. Big time for him. The kid just got 30 first place votes. First Cy Young. First of many is my guess. 200. Speaking of workhorse. 228 innings pitched. That's the most in baseball by a lot. That's a lot. Um, Especially on a bad team especially on a bad team. Isn't it satisfying too to look at that 228 innings pitched and his 2.28 ERA and then look at Justin Verlander's 1.75 ERA and his 175 innings pitched? Just like as a math math thing, seeing all the same numbers, right? All the OCD folks here <laughs> loving that. <laughs> yes, very satisfying. So a big win for Sandy Alcantara and the Marlins. Obviously, this kid has an incredibly bright future ahead of him. And he is a throwback, man. Guys don't pitch that kind of innings. There's like that, that workload was incredible. And he didn't falter at any point in the season. Just really impressive. Max Freed finishing second in votes in the NL. He had a 2.4 ADR rate, 185 innings pitched. Like just think about the drop in innings compared to Freed and Alcantara. And Freed had an incredible season. Of course. Right. He was right there with Manoa, 5.9 ER, uh, 5.9 wins above replacement. He had seven third place votes and 10 and second. Go ahead. Sorry. With Sandy Alcantara, how many years left does he have on this contract? Five? Four? Four years? At what point, if you're the Miami Marlins, this is a, a team who finished – in the bottom third of the league. This if year. I'm Six, the Miami Marlins, I cut you, you off are, right here, and I, I don't say, you know you where to I'm talk going about with this. rebuilding. <laughs> <laughs> Look, Cy Young pitcher, super young. 
<laughs> Amazing contract. Amazing that contract. Is, I mean, look, we just watched uh, Juan Soto get traded for a haul. Uh, the speculation all second half of the year there was Shohei Otani. What's he going to be worth on the trade market? I would rather Sandy Alcantara. Like, if I could trade for one guy this offseason. Yeah. I would rather overspend for Sandy Alcantara than I would for Shohei Otani. Am I crazy with that? No, you're not. I would agree. Alcantara very well maybe, and I stated it, may, may, may very well be the number one pitcher in baseball right now. And it's hard to argue with that. Even even contrarians, I know in the comments we may get a couple, but even contrarians, it's pretty tough to argue with 228 innings pitched and a 2.2 ADRA. Like, are you kidding me? Contrarians <laughs> almost sounds like what Alcantara fans would call themselves. <laughs> I'm an Alcantarian. <laughs> I'm a Manoa head. Anyways, sorry, that was dumb. Uh, uh, great way to end the show, though. A stupid, terrible yeah. joke that my brain couldn't help but uh, let out there, so. Okay, well, we'll we'll give a little love to Julio Urias, too, of the Los Angeles Dodgers, who uh, pitched to a 2.16 ERA, 175 innings pitched, a 4.9 wins above replacement this season, uh, and a third place finish for Cy Young voting. And there you have it. Cy Young winners announced. A big congrats to... It's funny how the two uh, are so opposites, too, right? Old man Verlander mm -hmm. and young up-and-coming kid Sandy Alcantara. Not up and coming anymore. He's arrived. He's arrived. So uh, a big congrats to, to those two. Some interesting things are coming out on the Aaron Judge front, my dude. Hello and welcome everybody to the walk off. I'm Scott Belford, joined as always by the best co-host in the biz, Adam Mack. So last night I was reading an article from Ken Rosenthal on The Athletic and I sent it to you being like, holy crap, man. Like, it's crazy. This is crazy. This is literally could be considered collusion and is incredibly against the rules. So Major League Baseball currently is investigating whether comments attributed to Mets sources uh, about their reluctancy to pursue Aaron Judge as a free agent and to not try and outbid the Yankees is actually against the rules. So on November 3rd, the Mets on their television network basically said that they wouldn't bid against the Yankees for so Aaron Judge. Which this, this is the Mets equivalent of Sportsnet. Yes. Okay. Yes. And obviously, Major League Baseball Players Association was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. You yeah. can't say this yeah because it's it's meddling in the negotiations of aaron judge's free agency of course from an outside source right so we'll see how this from an inside out, source how, from an inside source my apologies yes from an inside source so what's going to be interesting in my opinion is to see how aaron judge's camp views this because I'm going to tell you right now, mm -hmm. the Players Association isn't going to demand an investigation unless something is pushing them to do so. And that thing is probably Aaron Judge and his agency mm -hmm. being like, what the hell? Do you know now, who represents already, Aaron Judge? Is it Boris? It's it just not Boris. feels like it would be Boris. It, but yeah, do you know who it like is? It should be Boris. But Whoever's representing who him has got to be... <laughs> concerned about this right so for good reason you know all season the long Yankees... we've been talking about the the big bidders in on Aaron Judge so now to yes. have one of the three biggest bidders go now nah, we're not we're not gonna compete with our our rival we don't want to mess with the yeah. Yankees yeah. yeah which is interesting and I know there's another investigation going on in the same sort of ilk uh, with the Astros because Jim Crane owner of the Houston Astros came out and said that they're not going to be in on the Verlander bidding because he would like along the same lines of Max Scherzer which is also not something you're technically allowed to do well these are all going to end in slap on the wrists but what is interesting in my opinion is how does this how does this come across to Aaron Judge Ooh, that's a good question who yeah. has already said all the right things. But let's be serious. There's no way that being booed after breaking the American League home run championship or the home run um, 
record. Like there's no way that doesn't hurt a little. Listen, money solves everything. And I'm sure he could put that aside, but now all of a sudden it looks like the Yankees and Mets are agreeing to step aside, <laughs> you know, like <laughs> it, it is weird. It's frustrating. I mean, look, we just, Aaron Judge did get a big contract offer last offseason. He said, you know what? I'm worth more than that. This is kind of bullshit. Bet on himself. Excuse my language. And so now to finally get there, to get to free agency and go, I bet on myself. This is great. And now to, f- to find out that the team that you just gave one of the best seasons of all time to is putting its thumb on the scale. Yeah. And I mean, the collective to... bargaining agreement, the collecting bargaining agreement specifically prohibits the sharing of information of players' contracts. Like, this is a yeah. big no no. <laughs> is massive. I mean, again, Ken Rosenthal is the writer of this article on The Athletic. We'll link to it in the show notes. Go have a yeah. read if you're interested uh, in hearing all the details. Uh, Ken Rosenthal, as legit as it gets. Mm-hmm. For me, if he's writing on it, it's noteworthy. Mm-hmm. Is that fair to say? I so would agree. There's something here. I think we're going to hear a lot more about this uh, in the coming days, but this article just out this morning. So kind of some breaking news here on the Aaron Judge front. Uh, if you're Aaron Judge, Adam, does mm-hmm. this does this upset you? Yeah, of course. Of course it does. Yeah. You know, that's like, uh, you know, you're out, out on the job market. You're applying for a job and you know the boss is like, well, what do you think you're worth, right? And you're like, well, I think I deserve $14 an hour. You know, just a good young kid. And then to find out you come home and your mom called Canadian Tire and is like, no, 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 minimum wage is fine for him. (laughs) What are you doing, mom? You're supposed to be, what? I just hit 62 home runs for you, mom. Anyways, this is a weird metaphor. (laughs) Hey, your analogies, I'm here for it, man. You just compared the New York yankees front office to your mother and i love it all right right, let's end it there if you're if you're watching right now we would love to hear what you think if you're aaron judge does the yankees putting their thumb on the scale a little bit and maybe um one of the top bidders for your services coming out and being like actually we're out would this upset you yeah and do you think and i'd love to hear from yankees fans here too i know yankees fans normally just wind up ripping us apart in the comments because we're blue jeans (laughs) podcast yeah. but that's fine uh would love to nice. hear from yankees fans if you're watching what you think of this is this is this nothing like maybe maybe we're overblowing this and aaron judge like aaron judge is probably going to still just go to where the most money is but how many how many slights can he feel from new york before he's like that's too many that's, you know <laughs> like yeah Quit picking on me, mom. All right. We'll wrap it up here. Uh, thanks again for all the uh, support and the growth over the past week. It's been pretty incredible. We are yeah. uh, pushing 250 subscribers on the Clips channel and about uh, 3,500 on the main channel. So I uh, appreciate all the growth and love and support. Uh, we couldn't do this without the, the, the people watching, tuning in, commenting, interacting. So appreciate it. We'll catch you all uh, tomorrow. Big news show on Friday, right? That's right, buddy. Cheers, okay. everyone. We'll see you then.